Count them up. Uh, moving on. Oh, yeah. Let's go. The Clemson Tigers at FanDuel Sportsbook. You can get them at eight and a half as the win total. Heavy juice on the over right here. Danny, do you, and not like a Deion Sanders, do you believe, but do you <laughs> believe that Cade Klubnick, Garrett Riley, another year together, do you think that there should be a belief that that's going to lead to improved play? Yes. Uh, unequivocally, yes. Okay. I think he'll take a big step forward in the offense. I also think the fact that some young receivers we're going to step up to, Bryant Wesco, we know about him. Uh, the you know having an absolute weapon on the outside, I think could be a difference for him. I think Maffa's a pretty good running back too for him to be able to lean on as well. But I think overall the knowledge of the system, like having another year in a new system, I think will make him comfortable. I know there was a lot to be made last year of you know some of the decisions which we ripped him for and deservedly so when he went off and did his own thing at Miami. Uh, make I think a lot of that could be a direct result of unfamiliarity, newness in a system uh, and thinking you'd do one thing or just making the wrong decision, uh, which appeared he did a lot. I think this defense is going to be really good. I think they're a 10 and two team all day long. So I have them pretty convincingly over the eight and a half, which makes me a little bit nervous, but I'm bullish on Clemson. I'm under here uh, very slightly. I, I definitely don't want to pay uh, minus 172 to go over here. Um, I think Clemson, could have the best offensive line they've had in, in several years. Um, I think their receiving core is the most improved receiving core in the ACC. I don't know if I buy into Cade, to be honest. Like I really just have never seen much out of him that I liked. Uh, so I think it's illogical to assume that a second year under Garrett Riley uh, would lead to worse results. But I don't know that I'm going to buy a massive jump from him. But, I mean, granted, I, I could be wrong just simply because the receivers and offensive line are probably a good bit better. Uh, they did rely on Shipley a, a, an awful lot, and, mm -hmm. and he's gone. I think Moff is a stud, but in a different way. So maybe they just relied on Shipley catching the ball so much because the receivers all got hurt. That's probably, you know. But I'm a little concerned about the defensive depth here, and this is Ooh. where I think, you know, the transfer portal uh, refusal to use, I mean, you are relying on a lot of young guys here, and and – even acknowledging Clemson's very high hit rate in the transfer portal. Uh, I don't know that all of these young guys will be ready to play if, if you know a couple of them are pressed into action. So I'm going to go under very slightly here, but it's not something I'm betting. I don't really think – I think this is a good market number. I'm over. I feel pretty damn good about it. Um, <clears throat> I'm very much on the record, my skepticism about Cade Klubnik. I am not a big Klubnik guy, but – I look at Garrett Riley and the success he had at TCU with Max Duggan, and I just say, Cade, you just got to be Max Duggan. And I think Cade can be Max Duggan. I do agree with you, but I think their offensive line is probably in shape to be better than it has been for a while. And I do think they have some decent depth there as well to kind of withstand any possible injuries. I think the receiver situation is, is better. I think Phil Moffa is better than Shipley. And I think part of the reason the offense struggled last year was they were a little too dependent on Shipley. I was never a huge Shipley guy. They're different players, but I think I would rather lean on Moffa. And I think if you look at the run game last year, they were much better running the ball with Moffa than they were with Shipley. Defensively, I do have the same concerns with you. There are a lot of freshmen in that too deep, and that could be a problem with injuries. But I just kind of I kind of still give Clemson the benefit of the doubt on that side of the ball. They're typically very good. They've got very good players. You know, Barrett Carter is an absolute stud. They've got a nice rotation on the defensive line wade wood is a good player with an incredible name and i just think that overall this is a team that is going to be like we're just asking clemson to win nine games here and i know the juice on this is extremely high so i don't know if i'm actually betting it but clemson winning nine games feels like clemson wakes up and wins nine games every single season so i'm very comfortably on the over here yeah, that's because 12 years in a row, they won 10 or more. Mm -hmm. For 12 years, they had 10 or more wins. And only last year, nine after the uh, Kentucky victory in the bowl game, only last year did it have a collapse down to nine wins. Danny, I'm with you. 10.0. This is a 10 and two football team. I've got them losing to Georgia and then at Florida state at Virginia tech. I think they split those two. They finished the year 12 and two, seven and one in conference play, depending on the tiebreakers, maybe getting back to Charlotte to try to defend their title. Peter Woods um, is going to have 
a very big season, I believe. I think that you've also got your classic Clemson guys. Like there was Dexter. Hey, Long. Huh? Yeah, Demonte Capehart. Like that is your Austin Bryant, right? Or you know, like these these guys that are playing alongside the four stars and the five stars that have developed over the course of their career. Demonte Capehart is a senior who I think is going to have a tremendous year. Last year, they threw T.J. Parker into the fire as a true freshman. He played really well. They played. They threw Khalil Barnes into the fire as a true freshman. He passed the test. Uh, Avion Terrell as well. R.J. Mickens. Like, and th- and this year, I think it's going to be the freshman linebacker, Sammy Brown, who everybody at Clemson cannot stop raving about. This, to me, is the best defense in the ACC And then it becomes a question about the offense. And this is where, if I am to drink the Kool-Aid, it starts with Matt Luke is an improvement in offensive line coaching that will help the entire offense function at a higher level. If I am to believe that, then I think that we don't even need Cade Klubnick to take a huge step forward. And, And maybe... That maybe it's that higher, not necessarily the Garrett Riley higher. Maybe it's that kind of higher and reworking that the way that they're coaching that side of the ball that ends up being Dabo's big offseason win heading into this year. So yeah, it, it's eight and a half minus one seventy two at FanDuel Sportsbook right now. Maybe that ends up drifting up to a nine. I would like an over on a nine as well because I think this is a ten and two season for the Tigers. You think? Good. I I just the like the margin between over and under here is is like three points, right? So if you if you're betting under or just having to pick them all for a show and you think they're like six or, or seven point favorites at Vatech, then you're probably taking under, right? If you think they're more like nine and a half, ten, you know, at Vatech, mm-hmm. and then maybe like, you know, twelve as opposed to nine-ish hosting Louisville, th- then you're taking it over. I mean, it really is like a three point difference there. You know, it also depends pretty heavily on like what's your opinion of South Carolina. And are you giving them a straight up zero for the Georgia game? Like I'm not. I, I give them some chance to win that game, but very small, like like less than 25%. Um, but I mean, they are playing a lot of games that if you just do win loss, win loss, it is easy to write down the dub. Like they're clearly favored. They're favored in many cases by more than a touchdown, but not by more than than you know would put them in that completely safe range, I guess. Danny, did you have something? I was going to say exact, exactly 10 wins. Can you get that? I was looking. Uh, yeah, here it is on uh, FanDuel. Plus 310, exactly 10. Let's go, Chip. Me and you. Let's go. No, we're going right. together. We ride. <laughs> then they'll Come get on. 11. They'll screw it. <laughs> <laughs> they beat Georgia. And we <laughs> like, no! uh, coming up on the other side. What are we doing with year one of Manny Diaz at Duke? Florida State back on a revenge tour. Georgia Tech facing another brutal schedule. And can Louisville do it again as the schedule gets tougher? We'll get into all that and more next. 